Wow, and you expect me to follow that up, huh? Are our kids amazing? They're just absolutely amazing. I, man. Wow. They make us look good, but truly it's because of you that that happens. Well, good morning. It is great to see all of you again as we prepare for another school year. It is hard to believe we are just a few days away. I don't know where the summer went, but I hope you are as excited as I am about welcoming back our students and families as we continue to show them what we so affectionately refer to as the Union Way, excellence in all that we do. To all of our new employees, welcome to the Union family. You have arrived at a great place, and we wish you much success in your new professional home. And speaking of new, I have a special guest this morning I would like to introduce to you. He's really not a special guest because he's a lifer with us who graduated in 2014. And I just learned recently that last week he became a new U.S. citizen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please join me in welcoming our own employee, Wes Maxwell, 2014 graduate. You know, here's the amazing thing about that story is the fact to all of our new employees, it might take you a little while to understand this, but this organization is special from the standpoint is it not only will raise you professionally, it's going to raise your family. And for that, I am so grateful for. I really enjoy kickoff. It is the one time of the year where we can come together without too many distractions to celebrate the amazing work that we have done this past year and to reflect and to focus on the challenges ahead. Within the next couple of weeks, more than 50 million students will start school in this nation, right at 16,000 at Union. And just like us, they are probably a bit nervous, in a good way, about what the new year will bring. As our students prepare for their first day, I seriously don't think any of them got out of bed or will get out of bed in the morning wondering what they can do to raise their state's reading and math scores. <laughs> I don't think so. They will get out of bed in the morning, that is if they are motivated by their own interest, self-regulation, and their own development. Sir Ken Robinson, one of the foremost educational thinkers of our time, presents an interesting perspective about learning. Get this, he says that the reality is that no one can make anybody else learn anything. You really can't any more than if you were a gardener trying to make flowers grow. I mean, think about this. You don't sit there placing flowers and leaves on a stem or decide to paint it. The flower grows itself. Finish this sentence with me. The grass is always greener. No, not so much. It's greener where it's watered, it's fertilized, it's cultivated, and it's nurtured. You fell into that one. I think that is certainly true with, our, with learning. Our job, if we are good at it, is to provide the optimal learning conditions for every learner, to allow them to grow themselves. And too often, critics of public education simply think that you can create success by crossing a fence or placing learners in a different environment. This simply does not work unless you create the right conditions for all learners. The landscape of education in this country is changing, and this is due to many factors, some within our control and some not. Unlike private schools, we cannot cherry pick our students, nor do we want to. I mean, just imagine if every public school in this country chose to operate in this manner. I mean, think about this. Which school would have accepted you or me? Not many. I am certain that I would have been passed up by a few of them. <laughs> I cherish the fact as a public school district, we choose to take them all. And each time a student comes into our classroom and says, I can't, we know it is our job to convince them that they can, regardless, family, of their gender, their race, their religion, their ideology, and their socioeconomic status. 
Strong public education transforms lives. And much like our nation, Oklahoma is at a very interesting place regarding the future of public education. We are all too familiar with this picture. Today's learners, our digital natives or millennials, are demanding highly engaging, enriching, relevant learning experiences. Therefore, we have to step up to ensure that we continue to create the most dynamic learning environments possible for all of our students. Our survival as an institution is incumbent upon our ability to adjust and to re be receptive to the needs of those we serve. It is too vital for our own existence now and in the future. We are in stiff competition with a concept called choice. And I predict it will not fade with time. It simply will not. But I say bring on the competition. I just ask that they play by the same rules. And I ask also that our policymakers be mindful that the promotion and the proliferation of for-profit corporate charters and vouchers will further segregate our communities and erode the sense of interconnectedness and common purpose that our public schools have long provided. And furthermore, our democracy will not and cannot survive by reforms that are centered on exclusion. The theme of our kickoff, thank you. The theme of our kickoff is Don't Stop Believing. I cannot think of a more perfect theme in capturing the essence of the work related to our dynamic strategic plan. While we have not met our goal of 100% graduation, college, and or career ready, we continue to make unprecedented strides. This year, we will begin the process of formulating our next strategic plan that will guide our work into the year, believe it or not, 2023. Yeah, it's hard to believe. We cannot stop believing in the value and the importance of what we are doing on behalf of our students and families. We are making a positive difference in their lives. Union Public Schools has seen a remarkable rise in achievement, accomplishments, and reputation over the past two decades. By any measure, Union is one of the premier public schools within Oklahoma and on a path to become one of the nation's best, as recently noted in the New York Times. We must continue to capitalize on the momentum that has been built over the past four years of, of our current strategic plan. The plan continues to be a comprehensive, a bold, an action-oriented, and a dynamic document that serves to guide our efforts. It also sets the vision of this organization and seeks to build on the areas of teaching and learning, partnerships, human capital, business, operations, and culture. The success of this institution will benefit our students, families, and our community, while also enriching the economic, the social, and the cultural life within the region and the state of Oklahoma. As we enter the final year of our strategic plan, we must continue to aspire to be a catalyst for progress, high standards, and innovation to ensure that our students will be able to maximize their learning potential within a highly enriching, dynamic, relevant, personalized, and supportive learning environment. The students and families who arrive next Tuesday after the solar eclipse <laughs> are most fortunate to have you working on their behalf. And I hope that you continue to be just as committed to doing whatever it takes this year to make this the best year possible for each and every one of them. This school year is going to be another challenging one financially as Oklahoma continues to deal with a structural deficit. In my tenure, I have never seen so much uncertainty in school funding. While the economic downturn continues to negatively impact public school funding and threaten our programs and services, I want you to know that Union's commitment to you and our students remains strong. And despite the turbulent budget news that is becoming all too common, Union was able to meet all of our contractual and financial obligations this past fiscal year. And we fully expect to do the same this fiscal year. By staying true to our motto, together we make a difference, we have worked extremely hard to step up 
listen to this, to step up where the state has not in terms of adding value to your contracts by way of compensation and benefits. Thanks to the leadership of our finance division, we are in the best situation financially that we could be. Your jobs will be secure. Your benefits for the seventh year in a row will see no increase in insurance premiums. And the employee health clinic, tuition reimbursement, Wellness Center and others remain the best in the state. And thanks to a Board of Education that highly, highly values the work we are doing in our never-ending pursuit of excellence, they approved a 5% retention stipend to all eligible employees and along with a 2% raise for this school year. Thank you. I know I have said this before. And I sincerely mean it. As we chart through these uncertain financial times, I am so fortunate to be working with you. There is not a better group of caring, knowledgeable, and dedicated professionals. And I know that we will survive these turbulent times by keeping the focus on our students and their welfare. They need us now more than ever before, and they rely on us to bring our best game every day. Our students continue to, make, or continue to come to us with extraneous issues. And for all of our students, schools need to be the safest, the most uplifting, the inspiring and stimulating place in their lives. No different than what you would expect for your own children and your grandchildren. This is why your personal connection to our students is so important. Engaging them in high quality learning that fosters their skills and talents, helping them to see their potential, when they cannot even see it for themselves, that's what we are all about. And each of you, from child nutrition, transportation, grounds, maintenance, our nurses, technology, aides, teachers, and administrators, you all have a critical role in the development of our kids. And your job has never been more important as we continue to pursue our goal of 100% graduation, college, and or career ready. Our long-term commitment to continue with school and organizational improvement is among the reasons why Union is one of the premier districts in the nation. This, of course, is only due to an exceptional staff and a highly committed community that supports the work we are doing in early childhood, community schools, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and college and or career readiness. Our pursuit of excellence is never ending and that is the reputation that continues to define Union Public Schools. And speaking of never ending pursuit of excellence, congratulations to our uh, Support Employee of the Year, Skip Pettit, and our Teacher of the Year, Susan Henderson. Both exemplify the unwavering commitment and pride represented within our 2,000 member employee family. And speaking of community support, for the second year in a row, a Union PTA unit has been named State Unit of the Year. Congratulations to the Union 6th and 7th grade PTA for this distinguished recognition. Congratulations also to Darnaby Principal Chris Reynolds, who recently who recently received the Pat Henry Award of the, for the State PTA Administrator of the Year. And speaking of dynamic and enriching programs, our Special Olympians, under the guidance of eighth grade teacher Paula Antko, continue. <laughs> they continue to make us proud as they represented Union at this year's Special Olympics. What an awesome group of kids. Congratulations to also, uh, also to Dr. Penny Kay, who was selected the Special Education Director of the Year by the Oklahoma Directors of Special, Edu Special Services. As educators, we fully recognize the relationship between school success and student engagement. Our students are more engaged than ever before. Year three of our Career Connect program saw over 200 of our juniors and seniors participating in career explorations designed to connect students in a variety of industries like aerospace, 
sports marketing, and biomedical, just to name a few. Many of these students have already secured paid internships and were even offered employment contracts at the conclusion of the program. And congratulations to Union's nationally recognized Native American program also, under the leadership of Jackie White for receiving the Wilbur Gouge Sportsmanship Award while participating at the Muskogee Creek Nation Challenge Bowl 2017. I am also excited about the newly formed Superintendent Student Advisory Council. This council will serve as a student voice to the superintendent's office to ensure that we are meeting the essential needs of the most important commodity, of our most important commodity, our students. Our students continue to garner state and national recognition in fine arts, also under the leadership of a dynamic staff. This past year, the Renegade Regiment marched a record 350 students. And our Fine Arts Department was awarded a 2017 Best Communities for Music Education Award by the NAM Foundation. This is the second time we have received this prestigious award. Congratulations. <laughs> and congratulations also to Troy Powell for his second nomination for a Tony Award this past year for Excellence in Theater Education. Congratulations, Troy. <laughs> And speaking of talent and advocating for public education, a big shout out to the high school and creative writing teacher, Jenny Flower. <laughs> for certainly bringing to the national, uh, basically attention to the nation about Oklahoma's plight as we continue to fight for more funding and support for public education with her poem called or titled Education for Sale. Congratulations to Union Athletic Trainer, Dan Newman. <laughs> He's got the best job ever, really. Who was selected as the 2017 Oklahoma Athletic Training Association's Athletic Trainer of the Year. And championships are certainly an extension of this thing that we call the Union Way within our athletic program. Congratulations to Megan Maddox on yet another High Stepper State Championship. Wow. I could go out on a limb here, but I have a feeling as long as she's here, they might want to go ahead and just give her the state championship every year. <laughs> They're amazing. And congratulations to Coach Brian Elliott on and our girls soccer team as they secured their not one, not two, but three state championships in a row. Congratulations. <laughs> And our boys track team, under the leadership of Aaron Parsons and Jana Patterson, <laughs> secured the 6A state championship in rather dramatic fashion by winning the last relay of the meet to bring home the gold. Congratulations. <laughs> and congratulations also to Coach Kirk Frederick and staff on winning the 6A state football championship this past year. Union's ninth and Coach Frederick's fifth while at the helm. I am also grateful to be a part of a public school that is highly valued and supported by our community, as evidenced by a four-year bond approval rating of over 80%. I want you to think about this statement here. This, colleagues, is a firm validation from a community that has not stopped believing in us and the work we are doing. Congratulations to you all. We are continuing to chart a transformative course for our students through our focus on early childhood, community schools, STEM, and college and career ready. These philosophies continue to pay tremendous dividends for our students and our quest to increase academic achievement and student engagement while closing achievement gaps for all students. This school year, in partnership with CAP, Community Action Project, uh, we will turn Briar Glen Elementary uh, School into an early childhood center serving birth to three-year-olds for 120 students. We know, uh, that deserves an applause. We all know, and we, certainly we know firsthand, 
the value of providing a high quality education or early childhood education for all of our young kids. We know that it will make a difference certainly on impacting and mitigating poverty's influence on learning. Our community school's philosophy is expanding as we prepare to open our largest capital project to date with the opening of phase one of Ochoa Elementary. This is our first. This is our first comprehensively designed community school from concept to completion. We are prepared to welcome, almost, <laughs> almost. we will be Tuesday, around 500 students this year and we expect just over a thousand when the school is fully completed in 2019. We have also partnered with Community Health Connections to build a $12 million comprehensive medical facility that will set alongside Ochoa. This medical facility, mm -hmm. this medical facility is financed through the City of Tulsa's Vision Funds and through private donations. This community school's village will be capable of meeting the social, the emotional, the medical, and the academic needs of our students and families. And our community school's philosophy also extends beyond early childhood and graduation. Union's adult learning program serves more students than any other public school district in the state. Each year, that's right, that deserves an applause. Each year, we serve just over 3,500 students seeking to earn a high school equivalent degree. Another transformative program we are starting this year will be an early college high school program. This year's ninth grade class will be the first class to take advantage of this concept. The program will allow a student to earn an associate's degree in conjunction with earning his or her high school diploma. It's a little late for me, but for some of you younger ones, this is going to save as parents, this is going to save the student and parents financially in a big way. It will also boost student confidence and certainly better prepare them for the rigors of college. It is our hope that this pilot will transcend into a statewide opportunity for all Oklahoma students in the near future. We have great kids. And with the proper support, motivation, and opportunities, they should all be able to experience the benefits that come from higher education. We cannot allow poverty to be a determining factor in our students' dreams and aspirations. The research is very clear. Those who complete a college degree will make significantly more money over their lifetimes and will be healthier, more mentally and emotionally stable and, contri and continue, contribute more to society. We are making great strides in preparing our students for college. For the fifth year in a row, Union was named the 6A Oklahoma Promise Champions by the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education. That's amazing, that's amazing. We must continue to impress upon our students the importance of taking more college readiness courses. Let me assure all of you, the collective work we are doing as a public school is certainly not going unnoticed these days. Um, I can tell you, I can tell you that when an editor from the New York Times calls you, it will put somewhat of a knot in your stomach. <laughs> My first reaction, oh no, oh no, what have we done? But I cannot tell you the joy and relief that came over me when the editor said they want to highlight Union Public Schools as an exemplary model public school. The title of the article, Who Needs Charters? Who needs them when you have public schools like these? Thank you very much. The article and certainly the national recognition that we, we received uh, from that article validates that we are going in the right direction and it speaks to the vital role each of you plays in this organization. As we know, together we make a difference. 
Last year, I challenged all of us to think about an important or one of our important core values, inclusiveness. Ensuring that we are accepting of families and students and employees for who rather than what they are. It is with uncommon joy that I share with you that Union Public Schools was awarded the 2016 Mosaic Award from the Tulsa Regional Chamber in recognition of our commitment to inclusiveness as an organization. Thank you. Well, we are ready for school. Um, thanks to the hard work of our support services division, led by Assistant Superintendent Charlie Bushyhead, McAuliffe will have a new roof. Darnaby and Peters, new outside paint. And more elementary, you better be excited about this. You will finally have brand new carpet that lays flat. If I receive one more phone call on, do you know your carpet has waves in it? Yes, we do. We dance around the waves. <laughs> but as I mentioned earlier, one of our biggest capital projects to date is an on-time completion of phase one of Union's newest elementary, Ochoa. A big thanks to our grounds, our custodials, our building engineers, our maintenance people, technology, child nutrition, security, and transportation. Thanks to the incredible talent, work ethic, and servant attitude of this group, we are more than ready for school. What they have pulled off this summer, of which, by the way, they do every year, is nothing short of amazing. So thank you all. Thank you. Ensuring student success must continue to be at the core of everything that we do. While it is true our reading and math scores are not where we'd like them to be, I believe we are working diligently in closing the achievement gaps for all subgroups and for all students. You and I must take full responsibility for the academic success of each and every student. We are measured by our focus. One of the ways we will enhance this focus is to reconstruct or restructure our data and assessment and professional development division. Dr. Todd Nelson, in his new role as Senior Executive Director of Teaching and Learning, will be working to build this data dashboard that will be used by all sites in order to target specific student and school conditions to maximize learning outcomes. We have a moral and ethical obligation to make sure our students progress academically regardless of where, where they are when we receive them into our classrooms. This is our gift as educators is to instill in them the requisite academic knowledge and confidence to master a rigorous curriculum that prepares them to graduate high school and to be successful in college and or career. Our data continue to show that if a student stays with us over time, he or she will be a proficient learner and they will graduate. Our cohort graduation rate continues to trend in the right direction and continues to be one of the highest in the region. Four seniors were named this past year academic all-staters by the Oklahoma Foundation of Excellence. By the way, the most union has ever had in one year. And based on our preliminary, let's give them a hand. And based on our preliminary PSAT scores, we expect to have our highest number of national merit and commended scholars this school year. These academic achievements do not happen by circumstance. They are a result of the collective work of amazing educators who possess an unwavering commitment and belief in our students. And words will never be able to express my appreciation and gratitude for the work you are doing on behalf of our students. Despite the dominant narrative that suggests public schools are failing, Union continues to be the beacon of what public education can and should be. Another area we must continue to focus on is technology as it relates to our work. We know technology will open frontiers and these technologies will manifest in our homes, in our schools, and in our offices with stunning velocity. Did you know that today's college students have never had to lick a postage stamp <laughs> to mail a letter? 
You know, you find out these things and you're like, what? <laughs> now one in three marriages start online. <laughs> <laughs> if it works, why not? <laughs> and more people today own a digital, a mobile device than they do a toothbrush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have an ingenious idea, and that is if you could ever figure out, maybe our kids could do this to help fund education, put a toothbrush on that mobile device, then you'd have both, right? Yeah? <laughs> It is not about technology in and itself. It's about educating and learning and how our profession will adapt to it. This past year, the Ninth Grade Center has been piloting a district-wide uh, learning management system, an LMS called Canvas. This cloud-based system has been an overwhelming success as evidenced by its use with students, teachers, and parents. We are now ready to expand the LMS to other sites in order to enhance engagement, communication, and personalization within the learning process. Technology can make the teaching and learning process more efficient and engaging. And it is going to continue to be a disruptive force by pushing us to rethink the way we've always done things. If learning really can take place anytime, anywhere, shouldn't we encourage it? This is yet another change that's happening whether we choose to accept it or not. Technology in its many forms now offers unknown and untold opportunities to engage young people's imaginations and to provide forms of teaching and learning which are highly customized to them. Thanks to our district digital learning committee made up of staff, parents, and our students, we now have a technology plan that will assist us in creating a more robust technological teaching and learning environment. I have to think that connection is why we are all here. Believing we can make a difference in our students' lives is what drives us. It matters not what someone is born, but what they grow to be. Our job, if we are good at it, is to convince our kids they are not a product of their circumstances. They are a product of their decisions. There are no shortcuts to any place worth going. That is certainly true with our 100% graduation college and or career, career ready goal. I am extremely honored to belong to a profession of hope, even more honored to be a part of this institution that strives to create schools with challenging and enriching learning environments that are free from harm, hunger, and poverty, and where respect and civility are valued, where the word diversity is treasured and quality, quality learning exists for all. We launched our audacious graduation goal six years ago, knowing it would not be easy. And oh, it has certainly not proven us wrong. Just like every great endeavor throughout the history of the world that has proven worthwhile, they are filled with many difficulties, tribulations, and challenges that are eventually overcome. But perhaps most importantly, and something we must continually remind ourselves of, they all began with a vision and a mindset that it can be done, a belief. We must continue to be laser focused and extraordinary in our work as public school employees and educators. Despite the criticisms, and unfortunately by those who don't know squat, I'm sorry, who know little, <laughs> who know little of what we do. Public education is right, and it is, ladies and gentlemen, a rightful thing. Our pursuit of excellence in union must be unyielding, and our commitment and aim must continue to be high. For the stakes we are playing for are very high and real, and we cannot we cannot afford to get it wrong. Our students so desire to be challenged, inspired, and led by great teachers and adults who believe in them. I heard a great story recently about a little girl in an art class doing a drawing assignment. She was only seven and not the most attentive student 
who sat in the back of the class. But with this drawing lesson, she was thoroughly engaged and very attentive. The teacher was fascinated and went over and asked her what she was drawing. And the little girl looked up to her and said, I am drawing God. To which the teacher replied, no one knows what God looks like. And the little girl responded immediately, they will in a minute. The level of conviction and belief that resides within that little girl is the same level of conviction and belief that we must have regarding the potential of our students and in the work we are doing. From our emphasis on early childhood, community schools, and STEM to 100%, graduation, college, and or career ready, we must never, and I mean never, stop believing. Have a great school year.